Hello, brethren, sisters. Hi. How y'all doing? Um, it is 8.42 a.m. in the morning my time. Um, ooh. Got something for you today. Um, first and foremost, if you would not mind, please, let's bow our heads and pray. Shall we? Bow your head. Lord Jesus Christ, my God and Father. Lord, please forgive me of my wickedness and my sins. I repent of myself, Lord. I am not good. I am incapable of doing this. Only Thou, O Lord, are the one who can do this, not I. Lord, please get me out of the way, that Thou, o Lord, may be present. Lord, please put your words in this mouth that your truth, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth, Lord. <clears throat> that you, Lord, may speak to this congregation, this your people, the church of the living God, the body of Christ. Lord, please give me what is needed, what you know I need in order to do what you have called me to do. And Lord, may those who will see this, may they have eyes to see, ears to hear, and understanding hearts. May you give to them, Lord, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and all skill and learning. <clears throat> Please take away the distractions that you, Lord, may be edified, that you, Lord, may be glorified, that you, Lord, may be lifted up through this. For it is for your glory alone, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, praise you, Lord Jesus Christ, Father, for your mercy, for your blessings, for your grace that you have bestowed upon me, upon us, myself and my wife, sinners who are chief, the lowliest of the low, the least of all saints. And Lord, to every single brother and sister who through you, Lord, have given on to the necessity of these, your lowly servants, may you repay them and bless them a thousandfold. And Lord, the enemies of you, of your word, Rebuke them. Please, Lord Jesus Christ, Father, rebuke them sharply. Silence their mouths. And if they can come to repentance, may they come to repentance and true faith on you, Lord Jesus Christ. Bless you, merciful Father. I can't do this, Lord. This is all you. Get me out. Thank you, Father. Lord Jesus Christ, and the God, our Father, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. First and foremost, again, I want to just say to um, you, the body of Christ, <laughs> I'm not going to get all misty-eyed on you here, but um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. To all of you. To each of you. Your mercy. Your grace. It's not in vain. And the Lord reward you. Took the uh, past couple of days off because uh, my wife and I uh, celebrated eight years of marriage. It's funny, too, because she brought up to me, it's like, Brad, I think we should get a divorce. What? what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, we, unbeknownst at the time, 
uh, got a marriage license. Find that for me in the scripture. And she's like, we should do away with this Illinois uh, marriage license. And I'm like, amen. So pray for us on that. We are married in the sight of the Lord Jesus Christ, our God and Father. But that was something that we talked about to divorce ourselves from the state. Not from our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ and the scripture. So please pray for us on that. And uh, as we pray for so many of you. Um, and also too, I want to give a quick shout out to the beloved brother, uh, Matthew Melanson. Ha ha! See these? Uh, these arrived here Monday. But what happened was my wife and I were not home at the time. So they left a slip in the mail. And then I picked them up yesterday, uh, my wife and I, but uh, right here, uh, by our beloved brother, Matthew Melanson, um, whose channel I got to put in my recommended channels, uh, because uh, he does great stuff. Uh, the Lord blesses that fine man and his house, his uh, beloved wife and his sons. Um, these are the best tracks out there. Also, our beloved brother Aaron Judge makes his own tracks. If you can get a hold of him, he'll send you the, um, the template or whatever it is. But right here, yeah, these right here. These, uh, the beloved brother Matthew Millinson sent, uh, sent me a box of these. And uh, they are already going quick. So, uh, any of you want to get your hands on some of the Best, the best tracks out there. Um, I'll put a link for his uh, channel in this video, especially because I mentioned it. So get a hold of Brother Matthew Melanson. But now, brethren, this video unfortunately is going to be done in two parts. This is a video that I've been uh, that has been on my heart for some time. But now, um, just getting to it. We're going to be talking about loyalty. We who are loyal to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our God and Father, and unto His perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. This video, uh, because of the enormity of it, is going to have to be done in two parts. And if you watch this, I, I implore you to watch this one first and then the next video, which is going to be dealing specifically uh, with the Jesuits. But, in this video specifically, we are going to be dealing with the scriptures. I've uh, got a whole bunch of scriptures. <clears throat> and like I said, the enormity of this, I'm not going to sit in one taping four hours <laughs> speaking to you for four hours in one sitting. Kind of like when I did the, uh, when the Lord had me to do the, beg your pardon, the Holocaust video, uh, I had to break that up into sections. And I did that all in one day. And you could tell, because if you've seen the Holocaust videos, uh, the last one, it was taking its toll on me physically. So, um, these are going to be two videos. This one we are going to be dealing with the scriptures, and the next video we are going to be looking at first-hand sources about uh, the Jesuits' disloyalty teaching. But this one is going to be on our loyalty to our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. So, with that, get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Uh, we got a lot of stuff we're going to go through today. Hey, don't just sit there on your duff. Get the scriptures. I expect you 
to follow me along in the scriptures. Got it? Okay? Don't just sit there. I mean, if you're busy, fine. But when you get a chance to sit and go through this, get the scriptures. You are expected to. Okay? I do that with you. You do that with me. Because I'm accountable to you. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, and turn in your King James scriptures to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Now, dispensationally, this is under the law. We are looking primarily within the Old Testament and within the New Testament, but we are going to be primarily looking in the Old Testament for our instruction and in righteousness. Okay? But first, now, let's, let's get to this. Deuteronomy chapter 4, we will be reading verses 1 on to verse 13. Okay? Go there. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 1, on to verse 13. We begin. Now therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live, and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you, this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the, of the nation which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great, who hath God so nigh unto them, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great, that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, he's referring to the law of Moses, which is within the Torah, the first five books of Moses, okay? Which I set before you this day. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. Right there. Noting the dispensational difference. See, today in this dispensation, there is the circumcision made without hand. When you are saved and born again, you are sealed with the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that Spirit, God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. When you are truly saved and born again, you are sealed. The Holy Ghost within you, the Lord Jesus Christ our Father, is a permanent resident. Despite what you may do, He is permanently within you. He ain't going anywhere. Within this dispensation, under the law, they were not sealed. There was no eternal security within this dispensation. That's why it says right there, and keep thy soul diligent. Okay? I have a whole video on that. Okay? But let's continue. Let's reread verse 9. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, unless they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. Who's supposed to teach the children? 
especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children, and that they may teach their children. You don't hand over your children to be instructed by those who have been instructed by the Jesuits. Okay? Even if they're not from an openly Jesuit school. The Jesuits have their hands in all of, especially the public education system here in America, but also the colleges. Okay? The Jesuits control the education system. That's why, if you are a mother and a father of children, you teach your children at home. Okay? But let's continue. Verse 11. And ye came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire unto the mist of heaven, with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. And the Lord spake unto you out of the mist of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the word, but saw no similitude, only ye heard a voice. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments, and he wrote them upon two tables of stone. Referring to, of course, the ten commandments. Now, we are looking at this because during the Old Testament, under the law, for our instruction in righteousness, the Jewish people were called out of Egypt. Okay? And Egypt, for our instruction in righteousness today, is a type of the world. Pharaoh in Egypt, especially in the book of Exodus, is a type of Satan whose power the lost are under. Okay? And then they sacrificed the lamb put the blood on the doorpost, and then the Lord guides them out and are guiding them onto the promised land. Okay? That's for our instruction in righteousness. I cover that in an old video about the Passover. Okay? But, the Jewish people, the apple of God's eye, were to be an example onto the heathen, as we just saw. Okay? Look at verse 6 and verse 7 and 8 again, okay? Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes, and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great, who hath God so nigh on to them? as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? The Jewish people were called out of Egypt and were, guide, or were guided on into the land of Canaan, okay, the, the promised land, okay? And they were giving these statutes and laws to be an example Onto the heathen around them. We just saw that. Okay? For our instruction and in righteousness for today, what we get from this is that today, in the time of the Gentiles, those of the Church of the Living God are called out to be an example by following the Scriptures and living our life by faith and practice according to the Scriptures onto the lost. Okay? That's the instruction in righteousness. Okay? That's what we can get from this. We today, the Church of the Living God, the body of Christ, we are to abide by the Scriptures. Our source of faith and practice. We are to abide by the Scriptures. Okay? That's why we're looking at this. But now... Also in Deuteronomy chapter 4, look at verses 20 and on to verse 25, okay? Verses 20 on to verse 25. <clears throat> but 
But the Lord hath taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance, as ye are this day. Furthermore, the Lord was angry with me for your sakes, and swear that I should not go over Jordan, and that I should not go in unto that good land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. But I must die in this land. I must not go over Jordan, but ye shall go over and possess that good land. Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenants of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image, or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. When thou shalt beget children, and children's children, and ye shall have remained long in the land, and shall corrupt yourselves, and make a graven image, or the likeness of anything, and shall do evil in the sight of the Lord thy God, to provoke him to anger. Let's read verse 26. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day, that ye shall soon utterly perish from off the land whereunto ye go over Jordan to possess it. Ye shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. Okay? Look at what happens to a nation that forgets God. Look at the nation that says that they believe in God, and yet, in their hearts, they were far from it. Look at my nation, America. I rest my case. Now, go to Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 on to verse 11. Now, remember, oh, take your part. This is for our instruction in righteousness. The Jewish people were called out to be an example unto the heathen, to shew them the power of their God. Okay? The Lord gave them laws, statutes, and judgments which they were to abide by. Okay? For our instruction in righteousness today, when the Lord, by grace through faith, saves you today, He calls you out. And you are given the Scriptures, the authorized version of the Scriptures, the King James Scriptures, the true and real Scriptures. And we are to live and abide by what is given us in the scriptures. For today, it's the Pauline epistles for the time of the Gentiles. We can get a whole lot of instruction and in righteousness from the Old Testament, of course. And there are things that cross dispensational lines. But we are to abide by the scriptures. And we are looking at this predominantly at first... To show you what God's intention was for the Jew to be the head, not the tail, to be the prime example. Okay? Now, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 on to verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 on to verse 11. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Doctrinally, speaking specifically about the Jews, our instruction in righteousness. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because ye were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. And truly saved, born again, King James Scripture, believing, Church of the Living God. How how many of there are us are of us today? Not that many. No, everybody else is a Christian. Don't get me started on that. Verse eight. But because the Lord 
loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen, from the hand of Pharaoh, Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Again, our instruction in righteousness. Egypt is a type of the lost world. Pharaoh is a type of Satan. When you get born again, by grace, through faith, the Lord calls you out of Egypt, out of the bondage of Satan, Pharaoh. Okay? It's very important to note that for our instruction in righteousness. Let's continue. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him, and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and repayeth them that hate him to their face, to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments, and the statutes, and the judgments, which I command thee this day to do them. Okay? Like I said, this is our instruction in righteousness. But for today, we have the scriptures. You are to be reading the scriptures, studying, study to shoot thyself approved on a God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It's a command. We are to study the scriptures. You in the scriptures, right? Daily, right? Get off on that. Now look at verse 25. Well, wait, wait, wait. We're going to come back to that. We're going to come back to that. Now, go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 11 on to verse 20. God is exhorting them, the Jews, to live according to the statutes and judgments. Okay? The Ten Commandments. And the Torah was written. It was spoken, but it was also written. Okay? It was both back then. During uh, under the law, okay, and you see within the book of the Kings and Chronicles, okay, that they had written copies of the Torah, okay. We see that they were exhorted to fashion their lives according to the words of the Lord, okay, and they are warned. Do not think highly of themselves. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 11 on to verse 20. We'll talk about some instruction and righteousness for us today. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. And incidentally, yes, we are going to be reading Romans chapter 13. So, don't get ahead of me. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built goodly houses, and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied. Look at that. Are you looking at that? Verse 14. Then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents, and scorpions, and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth forth water out of the rock of flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. And thou say in thine heart, My power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. And, you know, the contrast of wealth here is not fiat currency. 
is not coin. Tangible physical assets. Let's continue. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. And of course then prosperity nitwits like uh, Doblin and all those idiots, I'm showing Church of the Living God charity when I say that, no congestion yet. Uh, they take this out of the, out of, totally out of context. Verse 19, And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day, that ye shall surely perish, as the nations which the Lord destroyeth before your face, so shall ye perish, because ye would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. Again, the Jews at this time, during this dispensation, were God's example unto the heathen. We've already seen the scriptures that cover that. And we also have to remember something else. Go now to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. We have to remember something. See, we the Gentile today, in the time of the Gentiles, in this dispensation, we have been brought into the tree of the Jew to make the Jew jealous. Okay? We are grafted in. Okay? The Jew is still the apple of God's eye. I did two videos on replacement theology. And one video especially dealing with Romans 11. Okay? I'm going to link those in this video, just so you know. Okay? We have to remember something. John chapter 4, verses 21 on to verse uh, 26. This is the woman at Jacob's well. Read the context on your own time. Okay, we still got a lot to talk about. But, check this out. John chapter 4, verses 21 on to verse 26. Read the context on your own time. Jesus saith unto her, talking about the woman at the well, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Check this out. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Roman Catholic Church. But... <coughs> <coughs> Beg your pardon. Just a little bit, just. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. We as Gentiles being grafted into their tree does not make us Jewish. No, it does not. Okay? God likes distinction. Salvifically, there is neither Jew nor Greek. A Greek is a Gentile, okay? But as far as our, na our nations, okay, God likes distinction culturally, okay? I'm not Jewish. And a majority of you that may see this are not Jewish, okay? We have been grafted in to make the Jew jealous. Okay, but we are not Jews. Okay, so mythically there is neither Jew nor Greek. Greek is a Gentile. Okay, do you get that? Yes, yes, okay. So, so mythically there is no difference. Culturally, yeah, 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 there's a big difference. Okay, there is. Okay, God likes distinction. Just so you know. Okay? So, ethically, today, no. Culturally, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Distinction, definitely. Let's continue. But the hour cometh, 
and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. New Bibles take that little letter out. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. Christ means anointed one. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Oh, and Mr. Haggy, put this in your pipe and smoke it. Heretic John Haggy. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee, and he, the Father. I have a whole playlist about that, so if you're like, well, 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 go check it out, okay? So salvation is of the Jews. Okay? I am a Gentile who serve a Jewish God. Jesus is Jewish. Not Roman Catholic. But now, go back to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7 again. Now we have seen in Deuteronomy, the Torah, the fifth book in the Torah. I don't use the word Pentateuch. I use Torah. Uh, you, we have seen the instruction in righteousness. What God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, called his people, the Jew, the apple of his eye, out to be unto the nations. Okay? We, we see this. Okay? We also see the warnings to not stray away. But right here, we got to read this. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 25 on to verse 26. The graven images of their gods are instruction in righteousness, the lost, the Buddha statues, the pictures of the uh, Roman Catholic satanic trinity. <coughs> <coughs> Just a little, beg your pardon. <coughs> Just a little congestion on that. Just a little. Okay? All these idols, graven images. Okay? The graven images of their gods, plural, by the way, shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Oh, and if you're a Trinitarian watching this, if I've just offended you by uh, showing you what I think of your Trinity, like I said, Check out the playlist. Or check out Brother Brian. Get Brother Jacob Thompson's book when he comes out with it. 600 pages. That's my time to read. Anyway, let's continue. Sorry about that. Right here. How are we, for instruction and in righteousness today, doing at this one? Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it. Abhor means extreme hatred. For it is a cursed thing. Buddhist statues, pictures of the satanic trinity, the effeminate Roman Catholic Antichrist Jesus pictures, Raven images, television sets, Hollywood movies. We can go on and on and on. I think some of us sometimes need to purge our houses. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house. 
lest thou be a cursed thing like it. Now go to 1 Kings. Now, 1 Kings chapter 8. Now, the Israelites, the Jews, wanted a king to be like the other nations. And that is talked about in 1 Kings or in 1 Samuel. Okay? Um, how they say we will have a king to reign or, or rule over us when the Lord is their king. But they wanted a king and the Lord gave them Saul and so on and so on. Okay? They were not to have initially a king, but they wanted it and the Lord gave it to them. And eventually the Lord Jesus Christ, the true king, will be ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. Okay, so right here, right now, is when Solomon was king of Israel, the immediate successor to King David. And we all know about Solomon, but we check this out. Now, this is when they had the king, when they had a king. All right, they were still required, though, to keep. With the judgments, the statutes, the commandments, our instruction in righteousness, the scriptures, our, which we follow by faith and practice. And I'll tell you something there, brethren. If you don't, sure pay a heavy price, don't you? I, Kings, 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 35 on to verse 50. Yeah, we got, a lot, we got a lot to go through. Wait till the other video. It's just too much for you, huh? 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 35 on to verse 50. When heaven is shut up, and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee, if they pray toward this place, and confess thy name, and turn from their sin, when thou afflictest them, then hear thou in heaven, and forgive the sin of thy servants, and of thy people Israel, that thou, that thou teach them the good way wherein they should walk, and give rain upon thy land, which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance. Now this is when they had an actual physical temple. Okay? Today, there's no temple, except our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And the, who is that spirit? Right? And who is our father? Right? Okay? We get that? Right. But they had a temple back then. God doesn't want a physical temple today. Okay? This is our temple. Were you, were you following me in John chapter 4? Remember? Okay? So, let's continue from verse 37. If there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, locusts, or if there be caterpillar, if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man, or by all thy people Israel, note that distinction, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart, and spread forth his hand toward this house. Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and do, and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest, for thou, even thou only knowest the hearts of some of the children of men. No. What does that say? You got that, of course. For thou, even thou, only knowest the hearts of all the children of men. That they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. Now, remember how I told you about how the Jewish people were set apart to be not only 
for the Lord's glory, but for an example unto the heathen. Heathens, non-Gentiles, could get saved during the dispensation under the law. Okay, they could. But they had to adapt, they had to become Jews, even though they were not Jewish. Okay, hold up. Get ahead of me. Okay, but they would have to adopt the, um, the statutes and judgments of scriptural Judaism and follow the law and do the sacrifices to make atonement for their sins and so on and so forth. Okay, people, uh, Gentiles, non-Jews could get saved back then. Absolutely. But they had to go under the law for our instruction in righteousness. There is only one way to be saved today. The Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, look up John 14 on your own time. Okay? There's only one way. One God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father. Comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? I have to throw that in there. But check this out. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people Israel, but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake. For they shall hear of thy great name and of thy strong hand and of thy stretched out arm when he shall come and pray toward this house. Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for, that all people of the earth may know thy name to fear thee as do thy people Israel, and that they may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name. Hold your place here. Go to Esther. The book of Esther. Chapter 8. Now, this is where Queen Esther pleads for her people. If you want to read the whole chapter, it is only 17 verses, but do that on your own time, okay? We are going to be looking at Esther chapter 8, verses 15 on to verse 17. Check this out. Now remember, the Jewish people were living in captivity under uh, Artaxerxes. No, uh, who was this? Ahasuerus, excuse me. Ahasuerus. Part, okay? So, but check this out. And Mordecai, uh, verses 15 on to verse 17, Esther chapter 8. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white, and with a great crown of gold, and with a garment of fine linen and purple. And the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. The Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor. And in every province and in every city, Whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. Became Jews. How does one become a Jew in this dispensation? How did, how did that happen if they were not legitimately of the Jewish people? They took upon them the teachings of the, of the Law of Moses, of the Scriptures, the Torah. Okay? This is evidence that non-Jewish people could get saved under the law, but they had to become Jews, that is, to adopt and adapt unto the principles, the statutes, the commandments of the Torah. First five books of Moses, 
uh, when you hear uh, Hasidic rabbis today say Torah, they're not just talking about the first five books. They're encompassing the Talmud and other rabbinic writings. Okay? Got to be aware of that. But there's more evidence to this. Go to Jonah. Jonah chapter 1. My man Jonah. Had a bit of an attitude problem, you know what I'm saying? Someone who was called and didn't want to heed the Lord's calling. Jonah chapter 1, verses 8 on to verse 16. The Lord called him to go preach to the Ninevites, the Jews' enemy. Jonah didn't like the Ninevites. And he didn't want to go preach to them. So he ran away from the Lord. Got into a ship. And then the Lord caused a whole big ruckus on the sea. The wind was boisterous, you could say. Okay? All because Jonah was in the ship. We pick up now. That's the backstory. Read this. Read the context on your own time. Verses 8 on to verse 16. Then they said unto him, these are non-Jewish people talking to a Jew, a Hebrew. Then said they unto him, tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thine occupation? And whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am an Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. That's interesting right there, because these men figured that, oh, he's talking about some, some king, right? Well, yeah, yeah. But they didn't realize at first, when Jonah said that to them, that they were talking about our Lord, our Father, our God, Jesus Christ. They didn't get it, but they soon will. Let's continue. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought and was temptuous. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not, for the sea wrought and was temptuous against them. The Lord was making a very big point here. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood. For thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee, so they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea. And the sea ceased from her raging. Picture that for a second there, brothers, sisters. Picture that. Okay? Picture that. Going nuts on a boat. That's why I don't like boats. On sea. Things going crazy. Waves going and wind. And they're going up and down, up and down, up and down. Just going crazy. They take Jonah up and throw him into the into the sea. Talk about a testimony, right? Can you imagine what that must have been? It's like, and you, and if you were not a believer, <laughs> like, whoa, man, what? Wow, wow. Then, verse 16, Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly. Yeah, right? And offered a sacrifice unto the Lord. And right there, see that? And made vows. I think the Lord got himself a few converts that day, huh? So we see 
that under the dispensation of the law, non-Jews, Gentiles, could get saved, but they had to become Jews, meaning they had to adapt and uh, adopt onto scriptural Judaism. Get it? Let's continue. Back in uh, 1 Kings chapter 8. From verse 44 on to verse 50. If thy people go out to battle against their, their enemy, whithersoever thou shalt send them, and shall pray unto the Lord toward the city which thou hast chosen, and toward the house that I have built for thy name, then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy far or near. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captives, and repent, and make supplications unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive, saying, We have sinned, and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. And so return unto thee with all their heart, and with all their soul, in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayer, and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people that have sinned against thee, and all their transgressions wherein they have trans transgressed against thee, and give them compassion before them who carried them captive, that they may have compassion on them. Okay? You get that? And they sinned. We saw in Deuteronomy, because they got either full of themselves or were going to stray from the statutes and commandments. For our instruction in righteousness, you're of the church of the living God and you go astray from this, or you live within a said nation that claims to be a Christian nation and has no regards for this, the authorized version of the scriptures, with that we have to remember Proverbs. Proverbs, here's a couple of one verse references, Proverbs chapter 14, one verse, I actually will read two verses. Proverbs 14, verses 34 on to verse 35. This is especially going to come into play with the next video. Proverbs 14, verses 34 and 35. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. The king's favor is toward a wise servant, but his wrath is against him that causeth shame. Proverbs chapter 29 now. One verse in Proverbs 29 verse 12. If a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. Case in point. Jesuit Trump, surrounded by Jesuits, himself trained by Jesuits, in league with the big boys, a 33rd degree Freemason, himself. <laughs> How can someone declare, what was it, six or nine bankruptcies, and then eventually become the President of the United States of America? <laughs> Hello? 
And there are those, my countrymen, who think that we can actually elect our leaders. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, and Oswald killed Kennedy. Yeah. <laughs> Go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 1 on to verse 9. Now we saw in the Torah, and also this is for our instruction in righteousness, I called the Jewish people out, the Hebrews out, to be an example, to live by the statutes, the judgments, the laws, the commandments given to them. Okay? Our instruction in righteousness today. We as the Church of the Living God are to live according to the Scriptures. This is our rule book. I love that. We are to live according to this book, the Scriptures, by faith and practice. As were the Jews in old time under the law were to live under the commandments. Okay? We see that. And when people stray against it, all hell breaks loose. Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 1 on to verse 9. Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem unto the residue of the elders which were carried away captives, and to the priests, and to the prophets, and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. After that, Jeconiah, the king, and the queen, and the eunuchs, and the princes of Judah and Jerusalem, and the carpenters and the smiths were departed from Jerusalem. By the hand of Elasha, the son of Shaphan, and Gamariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent unto Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build ye houses, and dwell in them, and plant gardens, and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives, and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there, and not diminished. And seek, are you looking at that? And seek the peace of the city, whither I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. Are you, are you mentioning or thinking right now about what it says in Romans 13? We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Actually, we're going to read that whole chapter. I hope you can handle it. Okay? But, let's continue. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, God of Israel, Let not your prophets or your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which ye cause to be dreamed, for they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. Now see, he says right there, For those who are taken captive to live under captivity in Babylon, they were to seek the peace of the city. Okay, they were to obey what was there. Okay, they were to obey that. Okay, they were to obey that. Hold on one sec. Okay, they were to obey in captivity the Chaldeans, and they were to seek the peace of it under captivity. Okay, that's why we see that. 
The Lord said to pray for that nation while they were there captive in that land. That they may what? For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. Okay? So, under captivity, the Jewish people were to abide by, obviously, the laws of the Chaldeans, which were not always just. Okay? So, yeah. Under captivity, they were to abide by those laws of that nation under which they were held captive. That's why we looked in uh, 1 Kings chapter 8. But now here's, here's, the, here's a really real humdinger. What happens, or what happened, unto certain Jewish people, Hebrews, while in captivity, when the laws of the Chaldeans went against what the Jewish people, the Hebrew people, were commanded to keep? What happened? For our instruction in righteousness, today, what happens when you are under a government whose statutes and laws go against what is given us in the scriptures? Go to Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. We will eventually be going back to the book of Jeremiah, just so you know. But for right now, Daniel chapter 3. Now, this is when Nebuchadnezzar made the golden obelisk. Okay? I don't believe it was a statue of um, himself. I believe it was an obelisk. And what is an obelisk? Beg your pardon for this graphness, graphicness. You do the research, and no, I did not get this from Brian Denlinger. An obelisk is an uncircumcised male phallus. But the Masons worship. Okay? And Nebuchadnezzar said, hey, when you hear the sound of the music with a K, you're supposed to dip, bow down to it. And that was the law of the land. What about this peculiar people that were in captivity? What happens? Let's read. Daniel chapter 3 verses 8 on to verse 18. Okay? Now check this out. Think a little for instruction in righteousness for us today. For instruction in righteousness, not doctrine. Think about this. Church of the living God. Like Brother Brian did that video about the 27... A uh, hundred ecumenical guys who said take the vaccine. <coughs> Beg your pardon, I get a little uh, congested. Just Beg your pardon. Daniel chapter 3, verses 8 on to verse 18. Wherefore at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Doing a little mum 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 to him. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music with a K, shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the mist of a burning, fiery furnace. Yeah, roll that around in your head a little bit about instruction and righteousness for us today. Okay? <laughs> Nonsensical social distancing. Stuff like that. Let's continue. For, for, uh, from verse 12. There are certain Jews who... Thou, whom thou hast set over the affairs of the providence of Babylon, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy little g, gods, plural. 
nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kind of music, and all kinds of music, with a K, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, are you you're getting this for instruction and in righteousness, ain't you? You're getting this, ain't you? But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that big G, God, that shall deliver you out of my hands? Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand. But if not, church of the living God, destruction and righteousness, but if not, be it known unto thee, O Francis, O Sosa, O Trump, But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, plural, little g, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Now know something. These are uh, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were over the heads of certain of the affairs of the kingdom of Babylon. But what King Nebuchadnezzar was having them to do went against their commandments that the Lord God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ gave them. And they were refused to bow down to his gods, little g, plural, and refuse to bow down to an uncircumcised phallus. And we got to read this very quickly. Verse 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. He was a little, uh, <laughs> and the form of his visage was changed against Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah, who you think you are? Church of the Living God. Uh, second wave has started. They released the vaccine, which they already have. They already have the vaccine. Don't buy that for one second. They're just making it look good, building up more fear through the propaganda. Okay? You need to take the vaccine. If you don't, you're an enemy. You're the bad guy. I ain't taking your vaccine. I ain't doing it. <laughs> this is nonsense. Who are you? Right? Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed 
against Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake, and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And it killed the guys who threw in Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Killed them. Verses 23 and verse 30. Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego trusted in the Lord and didn't obey the commandments that were, don't bow down to their gods or worship them. Okay? They stuck with God's commandments instruction and righteousness today. We stick with the authorized version of the scriptures no matter what. Verses 23 and verse 30. And these three in Daniel chapter 3. And these three men, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the, into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was a stony, and rose up and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He's like, Whoa! Oh. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Virtually all new Bible perversions put like the Son of, or like a Son of God, or like a Son of the Gods. They mess it up. Who is that? That was the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father in the fiery furnace with those three guys who got thrown in because they kept to God's judgment, statutes, commandments. Oh, by now you are definitely getting the instruction and in righteousness that we need, especially with the second wave on the horizon. You're getting it. Let's continue. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel, and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word, <laughs> yeah. And yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Think about this, Church of the Living God. Those fake 2700 uh, evangelists that say, you gotta take the vaccine. Look at that. That they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. You need to settle it in your heart when it comes and it's coming. Mandatory vaccination. You need to settle it. What are you going to do? Who are you going to serve? 
say you serve the Lord. Praise the Lord. You abide by this book? By faith and practice? Verse 29. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the providence of Babylon. Now, I personally believe that King Nebuchadnezzar is in heaven. And you can see the evidence of that in Daniel chapter 4, especially verse 37. But we're not going to look at that, okay? The Lord was getting to converting, if you will, King Nebuchadnezzar. Elsewhere in Scripture, the Lord, our God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, even referred to King Nebuchadnezzar as his servant. Okay? Very important to note. But let, let's look at another example of a Hebrew man, a Jewish man, abiding by what God hath said, even when the laws were there, which went contrary, excuse me, to what God hath said. You get that right? Uh, Daniel chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 15. Daniel chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 15. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, not that, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was pre preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, Neither was there any error or fault found in him. Talk about a testimony. He was faithful. He did what uh, King Darius and several others before, uh, before King Darius, he was faithful on them. Because he abided by what God had said. And hence, he was brought into favor amongst these heathen Gentile kings. Check this out. Then, uh, verse 5. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king, and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. A little there going on. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, and the princes, the counselors, and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god, note the capital G there, or man for thirty days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. They kind of butted him up a little bit. Let's, see. Let's continue. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. The 
law said not to do that. But what did Daniel do? The law says in most places <laughs> social distancing. Look at our brethren in Australia. I rest my case. Okay? And don't worry, we're going to be looking at references to that here in a moment. A little, in a little bit. But, who did Daniel fear? Let's continue. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within thirty days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Then answered they and said before the king, That Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself. He figured it out. And set his heart on to deliver, to deliver, ah, and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king, and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is, that no decree nor statute which the king establisheth may be changed, not even the king himself. What did Daniel do? You're getting this, right? What did Daniel do? Now in Daniel chapter 6, verses 21 on to verse 28. They throw him into the den of lions. Uh, Darius spends the night fasting. Uh, he, was, he was a basket case because they had put, because he was tricked by his presidents by making this decree so they could get Daniel. Now, today, we, our governments, most of our governments, don't have people in place that are like Darius, like Nebuchadnezzar, who realize, oh boy, no, they're all in the hands of the Jesuits. But check this out. Verses 21 on to verse 28. Then Daniel said unto the king, O king, live forever. And he wasn't smooching the king. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. All this crazy stuff is going to happen to us, brethren. We are probably going to be here to see a lot of it. Not the time of Jacob's trouble, because we get caught up before that. But we're going to be seeing this stuff. We're going to be seeing the second wave coming in. I, I hope not. I, I hope I'm wrong. And when we're up there, it's like, you were wrong, Brad. Praise the Lord. Um, I hope we get out of here before mandatory vaccinations is in place. I really do. It probably ain't going to happen like that, but I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. And they're going to put the church of the living God. Not those... Not those fake ecumenical um, evangelicals, the 2700, who are encouraging Christians to take the vaccine for the common good. Brethren, it's going to come to a point where we're going to have to put everything 
unto the, on the Lord that he will get us through these things. Are you ready for that? Am I ready for that? I know that you're going to have to kill me because I ain't going to jail because I won't take a vaccine. You're going to have to kill me. But are we ready for this? It's coming a lot sooner than we think, brethren. Let's continue. Verse 24. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives. And the lions had the mastery of them, and break all their bones in pieces, or ever they came at the bottom of the den. Like, right away. Then King Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, Peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God. Amen. And steadfast forever, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and rescueth, and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. They were faithful unto the Lord in what God hath said, even under these circumstances. The Lord rewarded them and delivered them. But there are some nitwits out there, and I'm using Church of the Living God charity when I say that. I say, well, that's not for us today. Jesus. No, 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 no. Go to Luke chapter 20 now. Luke chapter 20. That's Old Testament. Right? We're supposed to submit to every ordinance of man. Everyone. Because if you don't, you're the bad guy. Yeah. Luke chapter 20, verses 20 on to verse 26. Luke chapter 20, verses 20 on to verse 26. About paying taxes. And they watched him and sent forth spies, which should, which should feign themselves just men, that they might take hold of his words, that so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. And they asked him, saying, Master, Here's that little buttering up, right, like we saw in the book of Daniel. We know that thou sayest and teachest rightly, neither acceptest thou the person of, person of any, but teachest the way of God truly. Is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar or no? But he perceived their craftiness and said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Shew me a penny. Whose image and superscription hath it? They answered and said, Caesar's. And he said unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's, and unto God the things which are God's. Guess what, Church of the Living God? The temple of God are ye. Ye are the temple of the living God. God dwells within you. Okay? Your body is the temple of God. The Holy Ghost. The Lord is that spirit. Jesus Christ, God our Father. You belong to God. Okay? God lives within you. And you're not to defile the temple of God. Mm 
Render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's, and unto God the things which be God's. If you're truly saved and born again, you have a commandment. You're not supposed to do anything to defile the temple of God, which temple ye are. You're going to take a vaccine. You, Church of the Living God, Body of Christ, you have no right. You have no anything to be taking the vaccine for the corona going to get you virus. You can't take it. You're truly saved and born again, Church of the Living God. I'm not talking about these phony Christians. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about you, Church of the Living God, saved and born again. You can't take that vaccine. You can't. You can't do it. You can't do it. And Christ himself was for government obeying them to, you know, he was. He was for just government. Just government. Just government. Not government that went against his, the, his commands. Which we saw the Chaldeans did and the Persians and the Medes did. But those who stuck true to the commandments of the Lord, he rewarded. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. Verses 24 on to verse 27. This is interesting. 17, Brad. Take part. Hopefully you're already there. Verses 24 on to verse 27. In Matthew chapter 17. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Doth not your master pay tribute? Talking about God the Father. And he saith, uh, Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Shimon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children or of strangers? Peter saith unto him, A stranger. Jesus saith unto him, Then are the children free. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea, and cast an hook, and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money. That take, and give unto them for me and thee. Give unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. Pay your taxes. For a just government. And back then at this time, the Roman government, the occupation of Jerusalem at that time was a just government. In comparison to the... Pilate didn't want to crucify Jesus. He did, of course, because it was prophesied. But at this time, the Roman government was a fairly just government. It really was. History actually proves that. But now, what many of you probably have been waiting for, Romans chapter 13. We're going to read this whole chapter. All 14 verses. Oh, can you handle that? Now, I've covered this in other videos before, but for the sake of this video, we have to cover it again. Okay? Romans chapter 13. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. 
Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Look at our example given to us in the Old Testament, which we already looked at. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience. For this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything, but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, out of the modern Bible translations, <laughs> that right there, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in the same, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that knowing the time, that now is the high time, now at, and that knowing the time, that now is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Reference unto the catching away. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly, as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. And these uh, these crazies are like, oh, well, see, you're not you're not doing it. You're not showing love. You're not showing. Christian love for other people when you refuse <laughs> and do the social distancing. You're the bad guy. Right? Yeah, you're the bad guy. That's what they like to twist. That's what they twist. They call you evil when you are doing what's good. Okay? Now this part was not in your no in my notes. Hold on one second. First Timothy Chapter 2, verses 1, under verse 6. Again, I've read these to you in the scriptures before, but we're going over them in light of what we have already looked at, okay? 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1, under verse 6. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings... And for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Hold your place there. Where was that? Uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29. Verse 7. And seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captives. And pray unto the Lord for it, for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. Go back to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. You get it? For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. 
who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Who will have all men to be saved. Okay? First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. Now I've already covered these, but in light of what we have looked at. First Peter chapter 2. Verses 13 on to verse 25. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers. And for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free, and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. For this is thankworthy, for this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully like the persecution that's going to come upon the church of the living God for refusing to take the vaccine. For refusing to wear a Okay? For what glory is it? When ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently. But if, when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. But committed himself, are you looking at that? But committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. What have we looked at already? who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were a sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Uh -huh. Chapter 3, verses 8 on to verse 17. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrawise, blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? Is it a good thing to live according to the scriptures? Huh? To live the scriptures according to by faith and practice? Verse 14, But, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And I already explained this in the previous video, the one I did before doing this. Having a good conscience, 
that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is better if the will of God be so, that ye suffer for doing well, than for evil doing. They speak evil of you because you won't wear a face mask. You won't social distance. You won't take the vaccine. And 1 Peter 4 verses 1 through 5. Well, we ain't done yet. I told you. I told you. You see why I uh, we can't go through the, the Jesuits thing themselves in this video? I'd be sitting here for four hours. Besides, i got to take Tina outside in a little bit. But let's continue. Verse uh, Chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. That he should that he that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of your life may suffice us who have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walk in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. See, we're supposed to be the peculiar, strange people, like Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, like Daniel. Like the instruction and in righteousness that we looked at in the Torah, in 1 Kings, in Jeremiah. You get it? But see, they say, oh, you're the evil one. You don't have man's common good. You're evil. You're a Christian. No, I'm of the church of the living God. Where did the disciples call themselves Christians? Well, Peter makes a reference to a kind of tongue-in-cheek. Kind of a, if any man suffer as a Christian, yeah. They didn't call themselves Christians. That's what they called us. But they say, they say you're not, <laughs> or this, you're not, you call yourself a Christian? You're, you're the evil one. Leviticus chapter 13. I've covered this in a video before, but for sake of what we're talking about, I'm going to cover it now. Not Genesis, Brad. Leviticus 13. You would do very well, Church of the Living God, Body of Christ, brothers and sisters. You would do very well to read Leviticus chapter 13 sometime. There's a whole lot of instruction and righteousness. But for today, there's something very unique. Leviticus chapter 13, verses 38 on to verse 46. Of course, go there. If a man also or a woman have in the skin of their flesh bright spots, even white bright spots, then the priest shall look. And behold, if the bright spots in the skin of their flesh be darkish white, it is a freckled spot that groweth in the skin. He is clean. And the man whose hair is fallen off his head, he is bald, yet is he clean. And he that hath his hair fallen off from the part of his head toward his face, he is forehead bald, yet is he clean. And if there be in the bald head or bald forehead a white reddish sore, it is a leprosy sprung up in his bald head or his bald forehead. Then the priest shall look upon it. And behold, if the rising of the sore be whitish reddish, white reddish excuse me, in his bald head or in his bald forehead, 
as the leprosy appeareth in the skin of in the skin of the flesh, he is a leprous man, he is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean. His plague is in his head. The leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent, and his head bare, and he shall put a covering upon his upper lip, and shall cry, unclean, unclean. All the days wherein the plague shall be in him, he shall be defiled. He is unclean. He shall dwell alone without the camp shall his habitation be. Now, covering on the upper lip. Notice it does not say, oh, no. and the sick person shall be put away. And these nitwits, well, that's just for leprosy. The, the principle is nitwit. And I say that with uh, Church of the Living God, charity, if I said Christian by accident. There, I did that one uh, for you there, Brother Matthew Melanson, for you. I know you'd slap me too out of luck. The principle is someone who has this kind of plague which they are calling the Corona gonna get you, the plague of all time. The sick, covering on their upper lip. Notice it does not, notice it does not say the nose. And the sick are to be isolated, not healthy people. You show me where that is undone anywhere else in the scripture Jesus healed the Jesus healed people yes God manifest in the flesh yes the father yes yes Paul the apostles had the sign gifts for the Jews of miraculous healing yes but this was not anywhere undone Anywhere. This is the scriptural protocol for handling of such things. Hence, Church of the Living God. And you Christians, we are not to abide. <laughs> Social distancing, stay at home. If you're not sick. Do you follow this by faith and practice? Do we need to go to the scriptures where it says that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost? That whosoever shall defile the temple of the Holy Ghost, him shall God destroy? Do we need to go there? You, you, you get this? But see, what they do is they twist this on you. Who are they? The Jesuits. And the, their coadjutors. And all these nitwits who say they are Christians but are not of the church of the living God. Go to Isaiah chapter 5. Yeah. Brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God, Body of Christ. We are to live our lives in accordance with the scriptures. We are to live this book according to faith and practice. Yes, we stumble. Yes, we fall. Yes, we make oopsies. But especially today, it is imperative that our lives are in accordance with the scriptures. It is of the utmost importance today. But see, this is what they, they twist this and say this to you. Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 20 on to verse 25. 
Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle draw a strong drink which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteousness from him. See, those fakes, those nitwits, those Jesuit coadjutors and Jesuits themselves twist this and say that you, Church of the Living God, you're the evil one for not bringing out the common good and holding on the grass when it's contrary to Scripture. When your, when your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that Spirit dwelling in you, you cannot take the vaccine, Church of the Living God. You cannot. But you're the evil one. They twist this. And look at, look at America. Look at Australia. Okay? Look at our brethren that are suffering in Australia because of all this Jesuit nonsense. Look at it. America. Legalized murder. Abortion. Open sodomy. Mind control and manipulation. Predictive programming through the media. Unscientific maxims meant to control and break and destroy our economy. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. The scientific proof is out there to show that faith masks are harmful. The scientific proof is out there. You find this on your own. Uh, Brother Matthew Kroon is really good at finding these things too and he, he, linked, he linked all kinds of stuff in one of the videos, okay? The proof is out there that the six-foot social distancing has nothing to do with health. It has to do with the contact tracing, them uh, tracing you to see who has the vaccine. And if you're closer than six foot, they're not going to get a, a, an accurate reading, okay? The science, the true science is out there to just debunk it all. You're the evil. No. You're saved and born again, and you live your life according to the scriptures. No. There they And about most, if not all, the governments of today that are in the hands of the Jesuits. Oh, and don't you, don't you worry. The next video, we're going to be dealing strictly with the Jesuits. Back to Jeremiah, chapter 6. Jeremiah, chapter 6, not Ezekiel. Jeremiah, chapter 6. Work with me, fingers. Work with me. Jeremiah 6, verses 9 on to verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 9 on to verse 15. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine. Now this is instruction in righteousness again, but I think you're going to get the point. Turn back thine hand as a grape gatherer into the baskets. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding, with holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken, the aged with him that is full of days, and their houses shall be turned unto others. 
with their fields and wives together, for I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. <laughs> I like this. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Take the vaccine and then you can go back to your normal life. No, there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Look at America. Look at Australia. Look at your nation. Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 8. Jeremiah 8, uh, verses 8 on to verse 17. Jeremiah 8, verses 8 on to verse 17. How do ye say, we are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? Therefore will I give their wives unto others, and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For every one from the least even unto the greatest is given to covetousness. From the prophet even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Our peace, brethren, church of the living God. Come up hither. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. I will surely consume them, saith the Lord. There shall be no grapes on the vine, nor figs on the fig tree, and the leaf shall fade, and the things that I have given them shall pass away from them. Why do we sit still? Assemble yourselves, and let us enter into the defense cities, and let us be silent there. For the Lord our God hath put us to silence, and given us water of gall to drink, because we have sinned against the Lord. We looked for peace, but no good came. And for the time of health, <laughs> behold trouble. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to go out on a record right here, right now. If you take that mark, uh, not, excuse me. If you, uh, no, you're, never mind, whatever, forgive me. If you take the vaccine, you need to really question whether or not you're saved. The vaccine, as far as I know, is not going to be used in the mark of the beast. I don't know. We could be taken up before that. I do not know. But you're calling yourself of the church of the living God, and you take the vaccine. You need to question whether or not you're truly saved. You really do. I'm not, that was a slip of my tongue, I'm not calling the vaccine the mark of the beast. No. Unless we get caught up, then, yeah. But, I believe we're going to be here to see the mandatory vaccine. I really do. I really do. You need to be ready. But if you're saved, and you take that thing, shame on you. You won't lose your salvation. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. 
The snorting of his horses was heard from Dan. The whole land trembled at the sound of the neighing of his strong ones. For they are come, and have devoured the land, and all that is in it, the city and those that dwell therein. For behold, I will send serpents, cockatrices among you, which will not be charmed, and they shall bite you, saith the Lord. Very quickly, Micah Micah chapter 2 Not Jonah Micah chapter 2 Verse 6 Micah chapter 2, verse 6. Just one verse. I was going to read this whole chapter, but I think you get the point. And of us who will hold to the King James Scriptures, the authorized version of the Scriptures, those out there who call themselves Christians, not of the Church of the Living God, what do they say to us? Other than, we're the evil ones. When they're the evil ones. They say, prophesy ye not, say they to them that prophesy. They shall not prophesy to them that they shall not take shame. And finally, Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 25 on to verse 31. And this right here, is going to be a perfect lead into into the next video. Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 25 on to verse 31. Your iniquities have turned away the, these things, and your sins have withholding good things from you. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait. As he that set a snares, they set a trap, they catch men. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore they are become great, and waxen rich. They are waxen fat, they shine, yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet they, yet they prosper. And the right of the needy do they not judge. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely. And the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? Now, this is the end of part one. I'm going to stop this. I'm going to take a break. Put Xena outside. Chill for a little bit. Then I'm going to do the other one. So it's uh, 10 55 a.m. right now. So I'm going to end up uh, uploading these later today. But uh, so you know, I love you. See you in the next video.